Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a great day to be alive in my right mind, and I thank God for it. Thank God that we're able to come before you this morning in the presence of the Lord, because God is good and he's worthy to be praised. This is a story about an art dealer. And the art dealer was actually a forger. And this was back in the 1960s. And his name was David Stein. And he was a successful art forger in especially uh, duplicating European art. So in 1967, Mark Chago, one of the art artists that uh, Stein was mimicking, went into a, a New York City, City gallery and he noticed his art and his own signature where the gentleman had forged it. So, of course, the man went to jail because of the forging because he traveled all around the world just uh, being very successful as a forger. But m he went to jail, but many of those that were duped, so to speak, out of it, did not want to testify against him because know why? They were ashamed that they allowed themselves to be duped like that. We have to be very, very careful in being real or authentic. Then it says here, although people may be called Israel, they are not necessarily true Israel. In the same way, not every person or practice what is called Christian is truly Christian. Only God knows those who are truly his. So are, are we going to fake it or are we really going to be what God has called us to be? Amen. Our Bible decree is, this is my Bible, God's word, and it is eternal life because God's word is my guide. I will not add nor take anything from it. And I thank God for that. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before your presence with thanksgiving, we just thank you on this day today. You bless us, dear Lord, to have service. We pray that hearts will be touched, that mothers will be encouraged on this Mother's Day all over the land. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, remembering that we are refocusing in 2021 to be more kingdom-minded. We definitely want to be kingdom-minded to do the work that God has called us to do. So let's stay focused on the word of God. Let's stay focused on what God has called us to do in this day and time because a lot is going on. But the word of God never changes. The word of God will always stay the same. Please join us in all of our services. Uh, you can go out to our website. Uh, of course, we're on social media. We're thankful to all of you all who have sown your prayers, your talents, your treasures, your time to rock faith in these four years. We thank God that as of February, as I've already stated, we have celebrated four years of ministry, a ministry that started on our back porch. And I thank God, an independent ministry with no backing, but we know God backs us. On last Sunday, the title was Bearing the Burdens of Others. And I apologize, unfortunately, some, I had a glitch and we didn't do the whole service on social media at that time. But nevertheless, we should bear the burdens of others. And also the scripture has stated that we should bear our own burden, burdens. So we should be our brother's keepers. We should help our neighbor. And who is our neighbor? Anyone we come in contact with. So let's get into the message. Now, I gave you uh, the comment about Mr. Stein the fake art dealer. Well, today's title is, are we genuine or fake believers? 
Are we genuine or fake believers? The subtitle, the truth will eventually come out. Think about it. The truth will eventually come out. No matter how much we fake it, no matter, regardless of how much we try, the truth or to try to hide, the truth will come out. Genuine is an adjective of a person, emotion, or action. Sincere. P two, possessing the claim or attributed character, quality of origin, not counterfeit, real. The synonyms are sincere, honest, direct, candid, and be open and open. The antonyms, which is the opposite, fake, bogus, insincere. In this day and time, we see a whole lot of insincere people. We see a lot of people that are at one way in public, but behind closed doors, it's another thing. And we don't want to be that way. We want to be godly people out front and behind closed doors. Amen. Point one, Jesus sacrificed too much for us to not to be genuine. Think about the suffering, the blood that was poured out of him. Sweats like droplets of blood. He, God could look on him and be pleased because he became sin for us. So he gave too much for us to be, not to be genuine, or he gave too much for us to be fake. Point two, we can act like we're truly saved, but the trials of life will bring out the, uh, bring forth the truth. We could act like we love the Lord. We can act like we're doing good, we can work in the church, but those trials and tribulations, and plus God would uncover those sins if we don't go ahead on and, and, and especially repent from them. We try to cover our heads and our toes, our feet will show, and try to cover our toes, our head will show. Point three, being in ministry, church, doesn't necessarily mean that we are believers in Christ. Because one is in the church does not uh, dictate totally that the church is in us. Point B, point four, what a tragic ending to work in the vineyard and still lose out. What a tragic ending to spend all our time working in the vineyard, working in the church, doing ministry, all of those things, and God is nowhere to be found. What a tragic ending. And we do not want to be like that. We want to be those who are faithful. We want to be those who are really sincerely working in the kingdom. We want to be that. We don't want to act one way and be another. We want, don't want to lose out at the end, okay? We don't want to lose out in the end. Exodus, the 12th chapter, 37 and 38, and the point is being careful of the mixed crowd. Be very careful who you are entertaining or who's in your circle. Be very careful. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, even uh, very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. The point is, when they came out of Israel, or Egypt, the Pharaoh, Egypt had conquered many people, many lands. So not only were the Israelites in Egypt, there were many others in Egypt. So when God delivered, and listen to this good, when God delivered Israel, and the other was, others were under slavery and torture. They said, wow, I'm going to mix right in with the crowd and I'm getting out of here. 
Be careful who follows you. Be careful who's in your circle because there was a mixed crowd and everyone did not believe. I'm not saying every Israelite believed, but you had more of a problem because you had other people at the time who were not God's chosen people at that time. And we are all God's chosen people. We've been engrafted, thank God. But they just came on too. It's like someone uh, has a couple of buses, charter buses, and they said, uh, we got the ones who paid for it, but also there will be those who try to slip in without paying. It's the same scenario. So being careful of the mixed crowd, be careful who's in your circle. And I'm talking about right in the church. We want to speak to people, love people, help people, but be close who comes very close to you. Because everyone don't have the heart of God or they don't have the heart in what God is trying to do for you. Be careful of that. Romans, the ninth chapter, verses six through nine, point is, not everyone who is in the church or the ministry is saved. I told you, uh, I had mentioned this and it has happened. One time, this was years ago, I worked for the church, that's Gates of Faith Ministries under Pastor and First Lady Iris L. Nicholson. I worked there 10 years and, my, and uh, we fellowshiped there for 16. And one day in the church that morning, a bird somehow got in the church. And you know, ladies, you know, those ladies were scared. This is during a morning Sunday service. Even though, I'm using this point, even though the bird, the fowl was in the church, flying around up top, that bird wasn't saved. Sometimes other critters get in the church but they're not saved. And sometimes critters get in the church and they're not saved. What I'm saying is the creation can come to church, the saved, the unsaved, the whatever, but it doesn't mean because you're in the church that you're following Christ. It doesn't mean that you, you are a bishop, a reverend, a pastor over many people, many churches, doesn't mean you're saved. So we have to be sincere uh, in front of people, being sincere behind closed doors. Because guess what? God sees it. He knows our heart. It takes more energy to, to lie than to tell the truth. Because when you lie, and we can lie by being deceitful, acting one way and being another takes more energy to tell a lie because you have to always be looking over your shoulder. You got to start remembering that. Did I tell this lie before? It's best to be true and honest with yourself, with God, and with other people. Romans 9th chapter, verses 6 through 9. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall I see be called. That is, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are accounted for the seed. For this is a word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. See, Israel, God came to them first. Not all Israel were really the children of God. Not all of them accepted the Lord as God as Savior. They got with many heathen nations and they served Baal and all these other false gods. So not all, and it didn't make the word of God not effect. What God had already promised, it is what it is. Okay. So not all of Israel, and we're looking at especially right now the Old Testament, all the people, even though they were of Israel, they were not of the promise because they didn't accept what God had ordained. 
And the promise really came from Abraham, then through Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel and so forth and so on. So not all of Israel are really of the seed, are not the spiritual Israel. They are the physical Israel. We are the physical children of God. Okay? A lot of people will say, even though they're not saved, even before we were saved, we probably say the same thing. We are all the creation of God. We're all made by the hand of God. We're not all the children of God. No. Whether you're in the church or out of the church, if you have not been born again, yet working in the ministry, yet taking the clothes off of your back and giving to other people, uh, helping out to various causes. If you haven't accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're not of his. Then if we're not the children of God, what are we? We're the children of Satan. You say, what? No, the children of Satan. Either we worship God, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or we worship Satan. Now, you don't necessarily have to get outside and do all these blood sacrifices and all these uh, voodoo and all these other type of things. Either we serve God or we don't serve God. We serve the Lord, Father, Savior, Jesus Christ, or we serve Satan. Before I got saved, I was a morally good person down in the country, half a little late across the field. But until on my 19th birth birthday, a week after afterwards, if I had died in my sins, I would have gone to hell. Taught Sunday school, sang in the choir, did these various things. But I wasn't uh, saved. Guess what? I was worshiping Satan and did not know it. So either we're for God or we're against God. Either we're real or we're fake. I remember this was years ago. They had a, a commercial about Memorex, like the, uh, I think it was like an eight track tape or something. And they played this tape and put it, the microphone near glass, and the person was singing. Then they had a recording of it. And the, what the premises is, was that this person recorded voice played on this tape could shatter this glass. Was it live? Was it Memorex? The recording was not live. But it sounded live. Guess what? We sound like we are live. We sound like we are really in tune with God. But actually, we are dead men walking. Either we are genuine or either we are fake. I had said this on uh, past week now, word study on Wednesday night. I had bought in 1974, back in Ahoski, my first leather coat was a quarter coat and still got it today up in the attic, can't wear it. It was pure leather. This was 1974, beginning of my senior year. And it was real leather. I paid then, I think I had to put it on layaway, $110. It was that fall. That leather, to this day, what is that, 47 years ago, is still good. 10, 10 years ago, and I knew it wasn't real leather. I bought this winter leather or pleather jacket. Within a couple of years, the collar started peeling. The elbows started peeling. Because it wasn't genuine. It was pleather. It was a fake. But that leather jacket that I bought in 1974 is still holding on. Because guess what? It's genuine. When we are genuine with the Lord and with ourselves with people, when we are genuine, we can hold on. We can keep on holding on through the storms of life. 
John 8, 32 through 39. Don't try to live on others' relationship in Christ. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answer him, we be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abide not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Jesus is saying this. Because my word hath no place in you, even though they were claiming to be the seed of Abraham, but the word was not in their heart. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do uh, do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. In other words, let's bring it to, to today. Your father, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother, other relatives were believers in Christ, ministers of the gospel, and you're a PK kid, okay, a pastor's kid, grandkids or whatever, because you're in the church with your parents, grandparents, because they have covered you, that doesn't make you saved. So what they were backing on, we are of Abraham's basically natural seed. Abraham is our forefather, and they were booking on that. And Jesus said, but if you were truly and spiritual Abraham's seed, then you would do the works of Abraham. And it was accounted to Abraham, excuse me, that he was a man of faith. It was accounted to Abraham that he was faithful. He obeyed God. God told him, like in a Western movie, I'm just putting it this way, get out of Dodge. Get out of Mesopotamia. Get out. And I take and, and I will send you to a land that I want you to go to. I'm not going to tell you where. But he dropped, stopped, and rolled out of there in obeying God. So if the people, the Israelites, the Jews that Jesus was talking to in this lesson, in this scripture, he's saying, if you were really Abraham's seed or his children, you would be like him. You would absorb my word because before Abraham, I was. After Abraham, I still am. For Jesus let him know I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we can say that right now in 2021. Jesus is the same yesterday, last year, and beyond, right now, and tomorrow or next year. He never changes. So don't bank on your closeness to others. Don't name drop. And sometimes it's good to name drop. And sometimes it's not. The name drop is uh, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so told me to come and see you. That person knows that person, knows the name, and you can get favor. Let me tell you right now, he doesn't work that way in Christ. We can name drop all that we want to. We can name drop the name of Jesus. We can sing about the goodness of the Lord. But let me tell you, and right in the church, but let me tell you, if we have not repented and we have closed our eyes, we are going to bust hell wide open. No if, ands, or buts. We will end up in hell. That person will end up in hell with his or her father. See, there are two fathers. There are two gods. The great Jehovah and Satan. The great Jehovah, then Satan. We're going to go to one place or another. We're going to go to God, the Father, Jehovah in heaven, or you can go with Satan down into hell. 
No ifs, ands, or buts. So please don't drop names. Please don't say I belong to so and so church. I have talked to people over the years, and just in a general conversation, and I will say, uh, oh, they asked me what church I went to. I will tell them. It was my pastor. I will tell them. I said, what's your church? Uh, for, first of all, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Then they will say, well, I've been baptized. I go to a Baptist church. I go to a Pentecostal church. I go to a Presbyterian church. I basically tell them I didn't ask you any of that. What's your pastor's name? Uh, 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 uh. What's your church name? They couldn't hardly remember the church name. That means they really don't go, have the name there. But I said to them, that's not what I'm talking about. I asked them, are you born again? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I didn't ask you for your pastor's name at that time. I didn't ask you what's your name or your church. Uh, this is before, you know, in the earlier conversation. I didn't ask you all of that. But number one thing I, I want to know, do you have a relationship with God? Then I will ask them, tell me how did you get saved? Because, see, I don't want to just take people's word for it. Uh, of course, I can't read anyone's heart. Jesus knows. But we got to make sure that people are taken through the Roman rule of salvation if they allow you. Make sure that they know what they're talking about. We have to really make sure of that. So let me move on. John, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 15. We can easily lose out in God, rely on our heritage, and I kind of went over it. And I won't read every scripture of this. I'll just kind of jump. There cometh a woman of Samaria to, to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, but they didn't get along, asking me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritan. It's just like today in time. We could be so racist, be so prejudiced, because we don't want to deal with people out of our race, our culture, out of our neighborhood, out of our uh, church surroundings. We could be so racist, so biased, when God is able to uh, use any of us. But then it went on. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Listen to this. Which gave us the well and drank therefore of himself and his children and his cattle. See, again, she was kind of banking on her heritage. Jacob, which his name was changed to Israel. He was a father of the 12 tribes. So she was saying, are you greater than our father Jacob? Come on. Jesus is the father of all. Then she finally said, when Jesus began to talk to her about it, give me that water, that living water. Yes, she will have to go back another day to the regular well and pull the water out of the well, a bucket and a rope. And I know about that growing up in the country. But Jesus gave her that water that's an everlasting water. She will never thirst again spiritually. And this is what he was talking about. You won't uh, thirst again spiritually. So don't bank on others' relationship in Christ to get us in, in the right fellowship. We have to all seek out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. You can't bank on granddad and grandmama. Yes, my, especially my mother, my father, thank God for both of them. My mother prayed for me and, and all of that. But I couldn't bank on her relationship with Christ. And thank God my father got saved years later. I was already uh, away from home, but he did get saved. But as growing up, my father didn't confess Christ. So it was my mother. 
but I couldn't bank on my mother going to church. I couldn't bank on her prayers and thank God for them. But I had to seek a relationship, a genuine, authentic relationship with the Lord. I couldn't bank on my mother, couldn't bank on the preacher, couldn't bank on anyone. I had to do this personally. Romans 4th chapter verses, uh, hold on one minute. Oh, I said it one about the Samaritan woman. So Romans the 4th chapter verses 1, 2, and 3. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whirled to glory, but not before God. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted, was counted unto him for righteousness. Again, going back to Abraham, it was counted of him for righteousness. The point is, if we're truly of the lineage of Abraham, then we need to have the faith. He exemplified. If we are truly saying, and there's one greater than Abraham, one is greater than Ab uh, Jacob, that is Jesus Christ. If we are truly saying we are the seed of Christ, that we have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, then we will live a life that exemplifies him. We will, we will live a life that shows that we love him. We will exemplify a life that come through the, the hard times, the difficult times, the trying times. The love of God will show. I'm going to ask this question again. Are we genuine or fake believers? Either you're hot, we are hot, or either we are cold. Either your coffee is hot or the coffee is cold. Now, I don't care for cold coffee, the frappuccinos and the mochas. I like hot coffee when I drink it. But lukewarm, ooh, it is not good. And the Bible let us know that God will spew us out of his mouth. In other words, he will not accept it. Either be all for God or not. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27. Point. We have to live the gospel that we preach. If not, we'll be lost. We have to live, and hear me good. We have to live the gospel that we preach. And I'm not talking about uh, so much sitting behind a podium or staying. It's our everyday living. Because once we're saved, that we are ministers on, of the gospel, that we have preachers and all of that. But everyone who has named the name of Christ sincerely and following after him, we are ministers of the gospel. Okay? But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Subjection. This is Paul. Lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In other words, he keeps, Paul saying, I keep my body under subject, subjection that as I preach to others, I won't be lost or cast away. How many of us in the church are singing in the choir, preaching, laying hands on people, ministering to people, and end up being a castaway? See, we need a Holy Spirit to as a discerner of spirits. And we don't always get it because sometimes the person is up there is so far from God. They don't know when they left God or they never accepted God, but yet they're up ministering. But let me tell you, in the end, that person will be lost. Yes. Like Paul said, I preach to others, lest I preach to others. And at the end, I'll be lost. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Hell is filled up with people who cause many others to be saved. Many others uh, to turn from sin to the Lord. 
but they end up in hell. And what a painful reality that is. I don't want to go to hell anyway, but I don't want to do all of this and still miss God. Come on. What a tragic tragedy. That must be tormenting for an eternity. Uh, I was thinking back uh, over the years, being in this Richmond area, and this Thursday will be 30, uh, 42 years. It was a Sunday. It was Mother's Day. But this 13th of this month will be 42 years when I first came to Richmond at close to midnight, about 1130. And over the process of time being in church, there were many who were saved before me, many ministers that ministered the gospel, preachers and others. And I started counting some of the people that were ministering to me as a 22 year old. And now they have left God, kicked up the heels, and gone on, and many have passed on, lost. What a tragedy. Are we genuine or are we fake believers? James, the first chapter, verses one through four. Trials will prove if we are establishing the Lord or just going through the motions. We can go through the emotions. Let me tell you. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brother, he counted all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect word, that you may be perfect and entire and worn in nothing. As we go through life, naturally and spiritually, the trials that come, let me tell you, it will prove if you are for God, if God is in you or not. And God will allow these things to come to try us. He knows, but we don't know if we're gonna hold out. We will shout to the ceiling, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, running out my toes. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. I'm going all the way with Jesus. If I have to lose my life, I'm not going to turn around. And as soon as someone look at his cross eye, we're ready to just go postal. We're ready to implode and explode. But the trying of our faith the trials and the tribulations, if we handle it right, will give us patience. And also it will help prove if we are true believers, it will help prove are we genuine or are we a fake? And also look at this. <laughs> the, the, the name brand um, apparel, name brand perfumes, they have knockoffs and the perfumes the purses, the pocketbook, the shoes. And what people will do, as I gave you the uh, first part about Mr. Stein, will take and sell these knockoffs, which are not genuine, and sell it to people. And the person thinks they've got the real deal. Or even better than that, they will sell you, sell you a diamond. This is a whatever diamond is, what carrot it is, or gold or whatever, what illumination. And the normal, the regular person can't tell the difference, but the jeweler or the maker or those who work in the industry can look at it and see is it genuine or is it fake? The jeweler will take that magnifying whatever glass they use to look at it and see what it is. We need the Holy Spirit to help shine on ourselves. Now, I'm not talking about others right now. We need that to shine on ourselves to see, are we truly genuine? Ask, we need to ask ourselves this question. Am I really saved? And I ask myself this question 
uh, every so often. Ghoulie, forget it. Put your title aside that you're a pastor. Put this aside. Do you really trust the Lord? And I ask him that. Are you really saved? Are you trying to follow the Lord? I ask myself that question, and sometimes we don't have a chance. Back in 2008, when I had a terrible accident, when I was hanging and fell two stories, I <laughs> had time to recheck myself. And they were trying to get to me, but they couldn't. I double-checked myself, and I basically asked myself this question, Google, are you genuine or you're fake? Do you trust the Lord or you don't? Because I'm telling you, I couldn't hold on for much longer. And I knew that fall could end my life. I knew that this would be the, could be the day that it all ends. So I double-checked myself, not just in that moment of apparent hurt and pain and falling from that. Um, we need to ask ourselves all along. Sometimes we don't get a chance because death could come just like that. So we need to always check our temperature. We need to always check our gauge. We need to always check that, see, are we truly in the Lord? Let me tell you this right here. The, the smart cars, you really don't have to pull the dipstick, the oil dipstick out and check it. It will give you the reading. I don't trust that. I still manually, every so often, very often, pop the hood, pull out the dipstick, wipe the oil off and put it back in, like, and also the transmission dipstick, and make sure my levels are good. We need to not rely on what other people say about us. We need to check ourselves to see are we still in the faith. And we will go to 1 Peter 1 and 7. The point is the trying of our faith should bring us closer to God. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perished. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. Let me tell you right now. Don't freak out. Don't go ballistic because you're going through. Don't lose out. Don't go crazy. Listen to me good. Don't start, tr stop trusting God because things have hit you adversely. That's the time we need to stick our heels in the sand, in the dirt, and say, I'm going all the way. I'm going to trust God when it's easy, and I'm especially going to trust God when it's difficult. So on today, I really hope that this message has helped all of us because it definitely has helped me. Are we genuine or fake believers? Are we just in the church or is the church or the word of God in us? Because see, I am, we are the church of the living Lord if we have accepted him. So let us change. Let, let us have a paradigm shift. I'm no longer going to just be in the church. I am the church. So on today, if you have not accepted the Lord as God, as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you're in a backslidden stage, if you just want to grow in the Lord, if you want the power, the initiative and dwelling of the Holy Spirit, and a, you want a refilling, this is the time. And also, if you want to be a member of Rock Faith International Ministries Incorporated, you can do so. You might say, well, the pandemic, hey, look, we're still going on. Even though we don't have our church building right now because we were using the Y in Chester, Virginia. And, co and of course, we haven't gone back. We're waiting, but we're still looking for a place. But in the meantime, as they say in Hollywood, the show must go on. 
I'm going to say the ministry must go on and it continues to go on. And one day God will give us our own facility. But in the meantime, we're going to continue on. So if you want to be a member of Rock Faith, let us know. Maybe you're too far away or uh, hours away. Well, you can be a partnering ministry, a member. We have those. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands out. We pray for those to be saved, delivered, set free, that they will accept you as Lord and Savior, to be genuine, not to be fake, filled with the Holy Spirit, refill, bring back the backslider because you said you're married to the backslider. We thank you on today for those of the members of Rock Faith and those who are, will be coming. Because we want to be sincere with you, with ourselves, and with people. We want to be genuine, authentic believers in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that is it for today. Just remember to enjoy every moment of over every day to the fullest intentionally. We will see you next week. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. Thank you.